Prader-Willi syndrome is a complex genetic disorder that affects many parts of the body. It is characterized by a unique combination of physical, mental, and behavioral problems. It is the most common known genetic cause of life-threatening obesity in children. The key feature of PWS is a chronic feeling of insatiable hunger that typically begins after the first few years of life. This, combined with a slowed metabolism, leads to excessive eating and life-threatening obesity if not carefully controlled. Today, we'll explore the genetic causes, clinical presentation, and management strategies for this complex condition. To understand PWS, you must first understand a concept called genomic imprinting. For most genes, we inherit two working copies, one from our mother and one from our father. Both copies are active. However, for a small subset of genes, either the maternal or paternal copy is silenced by a chemical process called methylation, and only the other copy is active. PWS is caused by the loss of function of genes on a specific region of chromosome 15, specifically the Q11-Q13 region. Crucially, this region is imprinted, meaning only the paternal copy of these genes is normally active. There are three primary ways this loss of the paternal copy can occur, each leading to the same devastating result. First, paternal deletion, occurring in about 70% of cases. The segment from the father's chromosome 15 is missing or deleted. Second, maternal uniparental disomy, affecting 25% of cases. The child inherits both copies of chromosome 15 from the mother and none from the father. Third, imprinting defect in 5% of cases. The paternal chromosome is present, but has an error that silences the genes as if they were maternal. The key gene involved is SNORD116, a cluster of small nucleolar RNA genes. This is considered the primary candidate gene for most core characteristics of PWS, especially the insatiable hunger. Other genes like NDN and MIGL2 are implicated in sleep abnormalities and developmental issues. PWS symptoms change dramatically with age. In newborns, severe low muscle tone or hypotonia is the most recognizable feature. Babies are limp, have a weak cry, and poor suck reflexes, making feeding extremely difficult. This is paradoxically the only stage of life where weight gain is actually a problem, often requiring feeding tubes. Distinctive facial features include almond-shaped eyes, thin upper lip, and downturned mouth. Around age two to four, a dramatic transition occurs. The child begins showing increased interest in food. As hyperphagia emerges and metabolism slows, weight begins to increase rapidly, even on normal calorie intake. Global developmental delays become apparent, with delays in motor milestones and speech development. Behavioral problems emerge, including temper tantrums, stubbornness, and obsessive-compulsive behaviors. In childhood and beyond, the classic PWS phenotype emerges with insatiable appetite, a physiological drive that is relentless and overwhelming. This isn't simply lack of willpower. It's neurological dysfunction of the hypothalamus, the brain's appetite center. Individuals may hoard food, steal food or money, eat frozen food or garbage, displaying incredible persistence to obtain food. Growth hormone deficiency is very common, leading to short stature, small hands and feet, and reduced muscle mass. Hypogonadism persists into adulthood, leading to incomplete puberty and infertility in most cases. Central adrenal insufficiency can be life-threatening, impairing the body's ability to handle stress or illness. Obsessive-compulsive behaviors are common, particularly skin picking, which can be severe and problematic. There's a high risk of psychiatric disorders, including psychosis, anxiety, and depression, particularly in young adulthood. Physical characteristics include fair skin and light hair compared to family members, and often scoliosis. Sleep abnormalities are common, including sleep apnea and disrupted sleep-wake cycles. Diagnosis begins with clinical suspicion based on hallmark signs, especially severe infantile hypotonia with feeding difficulties. However, genetic testing is required for confirmation. The first test is usually DNA methylation analysis. This can detect all three genetic causes because they all result in the same methylation pattern. Further tests determine the exact genetic mechanism, which can be important for family planning. Management requires a multidisciplinary team approach. There is no cure, so treatment focuses on controlling symptoms. Strict food security is essential. Locking refrigerators and pantries is a necessity, not punishment, it's protection. A structured diet with strict portion control and rigid meal schedules is crucial. Calorie intake must be meticulously managed. Constant supervision around food is required, including at school and in social settings. Growth hormone therapy, started in early childhood, 
is now standard of care. GH improves height, body composition, energy levels, and physical strength. It increases muscle mass while decreasing fat and may also improve cognitive development. Sex hormone replacement with testosterone or estrogen is often needed to induce puberty and protect bone health. Behavioral interventions focus on structure and routine, as predictability is calming for individuals with PWS. Firm, consistent rules, especially around food, combined with positive reinforcement, are more effective than punishment. Medications may be used to manage obsessive-compulsive behaviors, psychosis, or mood disorders. Physical and occupational therapy address hypotonia and motor delays, particularly important in early childhood. Diet management focuses on high-protein, high-fiber, low-calorie foods like lean meats, vegetables, and legumes. Food access control includes locking cabinets and refrigerators with fixed meal times and carefully measured portions. Daily low-impact exercise like walking, swimming, and cycling helps burn calories and strengthen muscles. Active games and structured physical activities are essential for children to maintain healthy weight. Regular medical monitoring includes checks for weight, blood sugar, cholesterol, and blood pressure. Sleep studies monitor for apnea, while bone density scans check for osteoporosis. Children require monitoring for scoliosis, which is common in PWS. Family support groups provide crucial coping strategies and emotional support. A structured environment with routine for meals, sleep, and activities reduces anxiety through predictability. Tailored learning programs, speech therapy, and occupational therapy support development and independence. Community and social engagement through support groups and skill-building activities improve quality of life. With early diagnosis, growth hormone treatment, and strict management, many individuals with PWS can live healthier, longer lives. Many adults can live in specialized group homes with proper food security and participate in community activities. Life expectancy has improved dramatically and can approach normal with consistent management. The quality of life is directly tied to the consistency of the management structure and early intervention. Without proper management, obesity complications can be life-threatening, but with support, individuals can thrive. Ongoing research continues to improve our understanding and treatment of this complex genetic disorder. Prader-Willi syndrome presents significant challenges, but with comprehensive care, early diagnosis, and dedicated support, individuals can lead fulfilling lives. Understanding the genetic basis, recognizing the symptoms, and implementing proper management strategies are key to improving outcomes for those affected by PWS. Through continued research, education, and support, we can provide hope and better futures for individuals with Prader-Willi syndrome and their families.